Hello, this is Mark here at Garage Guitars, and I'm here for part three of my talk about Guitar Center. It turns out I did a couple a couple of years ago, and they're still popular on YouTube. And I thought, like, well, maybe people want an update of what's happening, because a lot has happened. So, firstly, start by why am I talking about this? Well, firstly, I own a guitar store, and I own a guitar store that's primarily brick-and-mortar retail. We don't do much selling online at all. Um, our, we're just working on the principle that people should come into a store, try a guitar, talk about guitar, point at things, ask about things. That's part of the communion of the guitar store that I grew up with, that I think is still a thing in the world of retail. It's still a thing that should exist. You don't necessarily need a retail store to um, buy your, you know, to, to, to go experience the toilet paper aisle. But you really should experience what guitars are, and um, I have other examples of that uh, that I won't necessarily talk about, but I'll do it in another video. But about experiencing the guitar, experiencing the guitar store. So, stay on topic. Guitar Center. So, I own a guitar store. I'm interested in the retail, retail aspect. So, I'm, I'm interested in brick and mortar retail. I'm... Um, also interested in guitar in general and keeping that tradition of guitar stores alive. I am interested in finance and I um, and um, so I'm, I know what um, well, so, so there's no secret uh, Guitar Center is owned by a um, private equity firm and so private equity is a big play private equity companies are big players in retail especially right now or any kind of declining market that they can see uh, a path to profitability in. so for example they have um this kind of route they take so the first private equity to own it was bain capital famously run by mick romney uh, who also i think they also put a couple other companies out of business <laughs> but uh so what they, they they don't aim to put companies out of business what they do is they take the company they take the controlling share of the company and they want to help the company do better because when it becomes a more valuable company, they can sell their interest in the company and that's how they make a profit. So if you got a friend who has a hot dog stand and they're great at making hot dogs, but uh, they get terrible rolls and they don't offer ketchup, you can be like, I know the hot dogs. You got to have ketchup and you got to make your roll better. Let me be your partner. You go in there and you become partners with this person and you really help them in there in getting their hot dog stand going. And then you have a more valuable hot dog stand. And you can say like, hey, let's sell this thing and make some money. Um, in short, that's the goal of, uh, of this kind of operation. Now there's a, a flip side to this. Another way they make money in this. Because if they fail, they have bankruptcy for the company. Bankruptcy uh, can um, create loan forgiveness and um, uh, debt forgiveness for the company that's going under. Um, also, these companies, uh, they have a lot of assets. They have physical inventory. They have, um, they have, a brick and, they have literal brick and mortar you know, real estate. Uh, they have name brands. They have, they have things that can be sold off. So if they're unsuccessful making turning around this business, then they're like, well, here's an unsuccessful business, and then they help wind it down. This is something, I think it was Forever 21. I got the wrong clothing company. Recently, uh, a, a large clothing, a mall store clothing retailer uh, went through this adventure where it wasn't going to happen, and um, they just said, okay, let's give up. And they did, and uh, they still get money and profit out of this, and they get to walk away with something, and they get to, uh, tons of write-offs and all sorts of that good stuff that it's actually okay for them if the company doesn't succeed. Good if they succeed, okay if they don't. Um, part three of that equation would be what Guitar Center is going through right now. And so Bank Capital sold to another private equity um, after owning it for way too long because it's been about 15 years since this, you know, the Bain buyout, I think. And um, it's been a while. And usually, um, these private equity companies don't want, they don't want to own a store. They don't want to do inventory. They don't want to, you know, they just want to make something more valuable and sell it. They're like flippers. They're business flippers or car flippers. Um, they have no interest in the actual thing that they're selling. Uh, they just have capital. They have loans that they can put into the business. And that's the other, you know, the main idea is they throw enough 
uh, capital into the business. They pay themselves to, to be consultants, or they pay their favorite consultants, you know, and all, all, all the backroom stuff going on. But uh, by throwing a bunch of money into something, you just hope it just kind of explodes into uh, um, a, be a bigger, better thing. And when it doesn't happen, that's okay. But uh, Guitar Center is in this kind of zombie status, where now they're owned by another... Um, Another firm that is still like they don't want to own a guitar store. They they want to offload this thing, and the pandemic was shaping up to be the perfect way to do it. They were profitable for nearly two years, and they were get IPO. They were gonna they were gonna look. This is it. We're gonna put this thing back out on the market, and finally get out of the guitar business while we can. And that was their plan, and it didn't happen in time. Now it looks, and so Guitar Center just did a bunch of layoffs. People hear about that. Um, and it looks like, and the reason why is a lot of times in the loans that these businesses take, there are benchmarks. And they're like, well, you know, if you are if you go below this certain number, you can only have this many um, employees. Or if you go below this uh, benchmark, then you're going to have to close. You can only have 200 stores, not 250. You know, and as you wind this stuff out, you create um, you know, equity in the pile to kind of make up for what you've lost in the market. So, still with me? <laughs> uh, it was looking good for a minute. Then, um, in the, you know, in the post-pandemic era, the supply chain stuff got, you know, cleared up. And, um, but not entirely. So, uh, retail was still hurting. Other retails, uh, retailers were providing better service. Uh, they were having employee problems once the stimulus money uh, dried up. You had like the kind of like, um, what do they call that? Uh, quiet quitting going on. Just people, they show up to work, but they're just not, like this place does not have my back and I don't have their back. I can totally understand that. So, um, now the window is just about closed. Now they had to, uh, you know, they had, another probably another debt event so either a re-up or something that triggered some layoffs uh, guitar retail right now I can tell you is slowed right down because guitar spending is generally speaking um, it's uh, what's the word for it um, there's a special hold on um, special term for it we call it um, discretionary spending generally you need one guitar. You don't need... I'm, I i don't want to tell you this. I own 23 guitars. You don't need five guitars. You don't need 23 guitars. You need... Uh, but you need one guitar if you're going to be a guitarist. But it's not the kind of thing where... Like a lot of times we're selling second, third, fourth, twelfth guitars to people. And people hear on the news that the economy is bad. They're not even experiencing bad economy in their life. And the first thing they do is like, Oh, I better not overspend. Because I heard inflation's bad. Because we haven't really had inflation since 1983, so no one knows what's going on with inflation. But, like, Dad said inflation was bad back in 83, so I'd better be careful and not buy a guitar. And that's uh, where we're at right now. Guitar sales are slow. Our store is doing okay because we do a lot of service. We do a lot of accessories, a lot of just, you know, people, um, you know, we do still sell guitars and amps. Uh, so we're in general doing all right, but when you have this really big business that, and my joke always is and You might have heard this from me before if you run a marginally profitable business and you become unprofitable You are not out that much money In other words if our you know profit margin is in the four digits um, Barely <laughs> no. um, Then if it goes down 50% in a month, it's still not like well, you know, we can we're all right We'll figure this out. That's what happened at the beginning of the pandemic. We just had to close at one time. So, <clears throat> what's the future? Tough to say. Uh, now, maybe I should have said this little caveat earlier. I have no ill will to Guitar Center. I think if you're going to have a massive competitor, it might as well be an inept massive competitor. I have no ill will for anyone who works at Guitar Center. And guitar Center is staffed by guitar lovers, people who love music. People who, you know, um, who even, you know, in, in the guitar industry, people, you know, the people uh, in the uh, in the business side love the music business, the, you know, the retail business. Uh, they, they are, um, um, their hearts are in it, and they're good people. 
So I'm not saying any kind of, this is not shielding fraud, like, ha, 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 Guitar Center, we'll get you. Um, but what's the future? It's hard to say, <laughs> uh, because I had predicted they would be uh, in a worse position already when I spoke about this years ago. But retail is in a, in a zombie, you know, a brick and mortar retail, mall style retail is in a zombie state. So, um, Guitar Center will continue to wind down for another couple of years, and then there'll be a big reorganization. There'll probably be a bankruptcy, um, because that's an option they have on the table. Go bankrupt, um, screw your suppliers a little bit, uh, figure out, you know, then you get the opportunity to leave uh, agreements, uh, especially if you have rental agreements and stuff like that, you can break existing agreements you have and come out a leaner um, company that's probably a little more focused on the online thing although they still you know they're such a big company that they, they still don't know what to do in the online sphere I think or how to incorporate that retail versus online but that will happen in the future so uh, bankruptcy eminent was two years ago and it didn't happen but um, it will keep heading in that direction so that's just my opinion, based on the research I've done, based on people I've talked to. I haven't been to a NAM in a couple of years. I used to get great intel at NAM. Uh, I used to show up at parties where you know GC uh, execs were there and that kind of people and other you know. So, but um, this year I'll go back and I'll, I'll get you some good intel. But for now, thanks for watching. I've got a lot of videos here on YouTube about guitar stuff, so uh, check that out. And um, also Instagram, Facebook, anywhere else, just uh, stop by, say hi, and we'll talk to you soon.